This is probably the first time I've been spooked in Minecraft. And I don't mean like a creeper jump scare or something minor like that, but actually fight or flight, high alert mode. True fear, in my opinion, is the apprehension of the unknown, and Mojang have captured that perfectly in their newest structure, the ancient city. Today I'm going to be walking you through the essentials of surviving down there, in the unfortunate event that you ever end up there against your own accord. But first of all, why would you want to visit an ancient city? Well, naturally there's the experience. The deep dark is nothing like all the other aspects of Minecraft, so it makes sense that the players would want to explore it. The combination of its unique block palette and the Skull Shrieker's darkness effect create a brooding and suspenseful atmosphere, perfect for those brave adventurers seeking a thrill. Then of course, we have the loot. The ancient cities introduce us to some exciting new items, such as echo shards used to create recovery compasses, the swift sneak enchantment for your leggings, and the shards of disc number 5, as well as some old favourites including god apples, music discs, and so much more. These items aren't essential though, and may take a while to find, so if you're just looking for a quick trip for resources, all you need to do is find the Skulk Catalyst which will let you recreate all of your favourite Skulk-related necessities from the comfort of your own home. But let's assume that you are looking for a longer trip. What are the dangers of the Deep Dark? So really, I see it in phases, with each factor affecting the next. So let's start out with Skulk Sensors. I love these blocks, and they deserve a video of their own, but for now, all you need to know about them is that they can detect sounds and vibrations and report them to their siblings. Now moving on, the sensor's older brother, the Skulk Shrieker. This one is a big problem. It can give you the darkness effect, which isn't really a problem, just a notable feature, but the second problem that we face is its summoning ability, triggered by the Skulk sensors, which leads us to the final factor, and main attraction of the wild update, the Warden. This creature can find you using its sense of hearing and smell alone, and can too hit someone in full netherite armour. This is not a kill or be killed sort of boss. It's a run or die when summoning this thing. So. We'll sort it into two parts. First is its searching phase, which is pretty self-explanatory. At this point it's optional to run, so if you're more adventurous you can hang around for a bit, as long as you stay at least 10 or 20 blocks away and don't make a sound. You should be fine. But don't hang around too long. If you get too close to the warden, it starts trying to sniff you out, and once it does, we move on to phase two. Started by a roar, its attack phase begins with it barreling towards you, going for a melee attack. Or, if you're out of its reach, it'll start sending sonic booms your way, dealing insane amounts of knockback. The Warden was never made to be a fair fight. So, perhaps we can avoid this. What should you bring to protect yourself in the deep dark? First of all, wool. Wool is super important in exploring ancient cities. The only safe way to loot chests is to cover them in wool. This means that no sensors can detect the opening and closing of the lid, meaning that you're free to your treasures. This applies for destroying skulk sensors or shriekers, which is arguably the most important use. Next, I would suggest bringing a silk touch hoe. This is just in case you might collect resources or anything like that, but it's not essential. But finally, in the event that you summon the warden, you'll need projectiles. You can fire projectiles to distract the warden in case it gets too close. Any work, whether they're eggs, snowballs, or bows. The only problem with bows and crossbows, though, is that they release a vibration when they're fired, alerting the warden to your location. Eggs have a bonus, though, as they have a chance to spawn a chicken, which will keep it distracted for even longer, allowing you to sneak away. Make sure not to throw them all at once in a panic, though, because if one didn't work, I highly doubt 100 would. And as a final note, whatever you do, do not throw them at the warden, because instead of distracting it, you'll anger it, and alert it to your position. Throw them into an empty area for it to chase instead, in turn leading it further from you, and probably saving your life. But now that you've got all the details, how are you going to go about approaching it? First of all, to find the city, search as low as you can, at highest around Y level, negative 21. If you find Skulk, then you know you're in the right place. Second of all, keep to the roofs. Generally, there's a lot more carpet and a lot less skulls, so it makes it a far safer alternative. Thirdly, do not engage the warden. I can't stress this enough. And I think that's it. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more from me, then make sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye bye Oh, and one last thing. Underneath the city's portal, or whatever it is, 
There's a little section for redstone beginners explaining the basic concepts. I think it's awesome, but I wasn't quite sure where to fit it in.